Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeson from Beauty and the Beesons and I upload every single Tuesday and Sunday. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more meal videos from me. That way I know what kind of content you are liking. So the first thing that we're making right now is a caprese dump and go all-in-one baked pasta dish. It is so delicious and I love doing like the one pot meals where you just throw everything together and they cook up to be absolutely delicious. This was one of my favorite recipes from this video. All right, so you can kind of see all the ingredients on screen here, but I'm also gonna be telling you what I'm using and then if you miss something, it's no big deal because I will have all of the recipes linked down in my description box below and I'll let you know if I made any changes to them. So for this meal, it sounds like a lot, but it's very easy, especially since you're just throwing everything together at once and then while it bakes, you can clean up. Or something that I've been working on is making dinner earlier in the day. You don't need to make dinner you know, right before dinner time. If you have more time during your day or your morning to make dinner so that you can just throw it in the oven come dinner time, or if you can prep any of your produce that you'll be using for dinner, I highly recommend it because dinner time is like witching hour in my house. I don't know about you guys. So the easier I can make it, the better. So this is one of those things that you could definitely uh, bake ahead of time and just reheat or you can save it in the fridge. So for this, you're gonna need two cups of cooked chicken. I just used rotisserie chicken, three cups of uncooked penne, and I'm using uh, the Jovial gluten-free penne, one and a half cups of chicken broth, a 15 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, two tablespoons of tomato paste, a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and two cups of mozzarella cheese. Um, I did one cup of grape tomatoes, and then of course some fresh basil because I absolutely love basil in my dishes. So this again was so easy and so delicious. It tastes like something that you would get out at a restaurant. So all you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 425 degrees and spray your 9 by 13 inch baking dish. And then you're going to add your chicken, your pasta, your chicken broth, crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, balsamic vinegar, garlic powder, salt, and one cup out of the two cups of mozzarella cheese. And then you're just going to cover with foil and bake for 40 minutes. At the 40 minute mark, you're just going to want to uncover it, stir it, and that's when you're going to mix in your tomatoes, your fresh tomatoes and top with cheese and cook a little bit longer. You wanna make sure just the cheese is melted because you don't wanna have mushy pasta, it's the absolute worst. But once it's al dente, is when you're gonna put the mozzarella cheese on there and the tomatoes and bake it for probably about 10 more minutes depending on how you want it. Some people like their cheese to be a little browned on top, but again, if you guys try this, let me know. It's absolutely delicious. How amazing does this look? Oh my gosh, so good. So now I'm just cutting up my basil and I'm gonna sprinkle that on top and enjoy this delicious meal. So easy, so delicious. I also think this would be a great dish to make somebody that needs a comfort meal, whether they just had a baby or they lost somebody or 
they just need you to bring them some dinner. This would be a great meal. I know I would have been really happy receiving this postpartum. You can just put it into a little foil dish. You can even just cover it and tell them to bake it um, for whatever amount of time for on 400 degrees for 40 minutes, 425 degrees for 40 minutes. But it's nice to do when you are making a dish for somebody like this to just write the instructions with permanent marker on top of the foil and I don't know it would have been a great thing to receive postpartum so I thought I'd mention that next up we have been making this Chris and I forever like since our one bedroom apartment days this is amazing so easy so delicious I got this rice cooker it's amazing it's pink which is obviously my favorite and it's from Amazon so I've been using this a lot just cooking up some brown rice you can also get the steamable rice cook it on your stove top or serve it with something completely different this Hawaiian stir fry is very fresh and one of my favorite things to make all year round but especially in the summer okay so for this recipe I'm just using some broccoli here so I'm gonna cut that up um, and then basically the hardest part of this is just chopping up some vegetables it's so easy I'm also doing one pepper, you can do whatever color pepper you want, some green onions, two cups of pineapple, and about two cups of mango. The pineapple I used can, you can use fresh, um, I just didn't have any, and then the mango I used fresh. You're also going to need a pound of chicken breast cut into about one inch pieces, and then if you're making rice, you're going to want some rice. And for the sauce, you're going to need one fourth cup of reduced sodium soy sauce. To make it gluten-free, you can use liquid aminos or la choy is gluten-free. Um, so yeah, one fourth cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You can also use white vinegar, two tablespoons of water, and then two cloves of garlic. You can also add ginger. I skipped out on that part. And then two tablespoons of oil. And that's just going to be for your pan. I got my amazing Rachel Ray wok from Target. I've been needing a wok for a very long time and it works great so I'll try to link that down below as well so yeah that's all you're gonna need for your sauce super easy and then for the chicken once it's cooked up I'm just gonna mix it with you can use a tablespoon or so of cornstarch you just kind of want your chicken coated don't mind all my dirty dishes in the sink this is real life I have four kids um, but yeah you're gonna want to make sure it's coated I use arrowroot powder just to make it um, a little bit healthier than cornstarch but no big deal if you only have cornstarch you can totally use that so basically you want the chicken coated and your veggies cut up your sauce made and you'll be cooking so so easy and very healthy and delicious Okay, now that all of my produce is prepped and my sauce is made, I'm actually using avocado oil in here. Um, it's a little bit healthier than vegetable oil. And then mixing the arrowroot starch in with my chicken pieces here. Once the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add my chicken to the pan and get that nice and cooked. Once the chicken is cooked, I'm adding in my broccoli since that's the vegetable that I'm using that will take the longest amount of time to cook. I'm gonna get that slightly wilted and then go ahead and add my onion and my pepper and let that all cook for a little bit before adding my sauce. Now that my sauce is bubbling like this and starting to thicken up, I'm going to add in our fruit. This is also one of those meals that would be great to just prep ahead of time, um, whether it's the night before or the morning of, and you know, just really be able to throw everything together. If you want, you can even make the sauce ahead of time. 
super easy and like I'm gonna say take a shot every time I say delicious but it is super easy and delicious moving on to our next meal which is a taco lasagna this is probably one of Chris's favorites and uh, Carter's favorite as well I also really like it but they love it All right, so a couple of things that I changed about this recipe was I didn't use beef, I used ground turkey. We don't eat a lot of beef in our house. It just always hurts my stomach. Once in a while, I'll grab a Wendy's burger, but who even knows if that's actually red meat or not. Um, so I'm using that, some onion, some yellow pepper, and then you're just pretty much gonna make your tacos how you normally would. Like you're gonna brown your meat, add your taco seasoning and your water, and cook it up, and then this is where I'll add in the onion and pepper. Now that that's nice and cooked up and my onions are slightly caramelized, I'm going to add one can of Mexican diced tomatoes and you're gonna keep the juices in with that. And then I'm also gonna add a can of black beans that I had already rinsed. Now we layer, and for that, you're just gonna wanna do corn tortillas if you're gluten-free on the bottom, a layer of refried beans, and then I'm doing half of my um, cooked meat with the beans and all that stuff that was in the pan. And I'm adding some green enchilada so sauce over top. You can do salsa if you want, adding my layer of cheese, and then we're gonna just repeat the whole process. Corn tortillas, meat, enchilada sauce, um, and cheese. Oh, and you always want the refried beans on top of their tortilla so that they will have something to stick to. Now we are going to bake this on 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. This is also one of those great meals that you can make as a comfort meal for a friend considering you know you can just put it in one of those foil pans, drop it off with instructions, um, and also something that'd be great uh, to make ahead of time as well. Thank you. 
Next up is super easy. Chris and I have been making this for years. And this is just like a barbecue jalapeno chicken with a sweet potato hash. So the first thing I'm doing is just chopping up all of our um, produce here. So I'm gonna do the sweet potatoes first and then the yellow onion. Mix that together on a sheet pan with some oil, salt and pepper. And I'm gonna throw that in the oven on 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. After that is when I'm gonna add my chicken to the pan. And you can use whatever chicken you want. I usually like thin sliced chicken breast or tenderloins more than like the regular size. I just, I don't know, there's something about eating like a fat piece of meat that I just can't do. I know it sounds crazy, but I've always been that way. Um, the next meal that I'm making in this video, we used a larger piece of meat and it was so delicious, but I just had such a hard time with, you know, the texture, I guess, when it's really thick. I don't know. <laughs> if you know what I mean, comment below, but I can't really explain it other than that. So yeah, chopping that all up, putting in the oven 400 degrees, 20 minutes. When that's done, we're gonna add chicken tenderloins, top with some barbecue sauce and some chopped up jalapenos. You can also use um, the jalapenos that come in the jar. That will give it a little bit more spice since there are seeds in that. Or if you want it spicier, just cut it up with the seeds inside, cut it into like little circular rounds and put it on top of our chicken. But first we wanna cook the chicken without the jalapenos and without the cheese on top. Those, that's something you're gonna add in at the last minute. Um, so uh, you cook your chicken depending on what size chicken you got. Since mine are tenderloins, I'm only gonna cook it for 20 minutes. So the sweet potatoes will be in the oven for a total of 40 minutes. Then I'm gonna check it and just make sure I add the jalapenos, how much you want. If you want it less spicy, you only need a little bit. If you want it more spicy, you add more. And then your cheese and just basically get it melty. And again, so easy, so delicious, and this is great for a meal prep. Chris and I were actually headed out to a date night, so I decided to make this at dinner time still, but do it as a meal prep so that we could have an easy lunch for the following day, and it was so delicious. So my sweet potatoes and my onion have been in the oven for 20 minutes, and I'm just moving everything over, adding my chicken and my barbecue, putting it in for another 20 minutes, and then like I said, just adding our jalapeno and the cheese at the last minute. Okay, this was so good, this California chicken. I asked my sister, I said, what summer meal should I try? I have one more meal that I need. And she said this was her favorite right now. And I'm obsessed with caprese salads. You saw I made the pasta. I'm also obsessed with burrata mixed with watermelon. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So I'm definitely on like my mozzarella slash burrata kick right now. Um, so this worked out perfectly for me for that craving. This is um, just like the sides that we're using. You can use whatever sides you want, but we just did easy Bob Evans mashed potatoes and some Brussels sprouts. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do for this is make your marinade, cause it's best if you marinate it for 30 minutes, even better if you can do it overnight. So this is a great marinade by the way, and I'm usually really picky about oregano, like I'm not a big oregano fan, but this Italian seasoning, everything together just tasted really good. 
Also, peep my new garlic press. I got it on an Amazon Prime Day deal. It's heavy. It's legit. It's not going to break on me like the other 10 I had. Um, so this is really good. Anyway, for the marinade, you're going to want to have 3 4 cups of balsamic vinegar, 1 4 cup of honey, 3 cloves of garlic, and 2 tablespoons of olive oil. You're going to add salt and pepper, and then 2 teaspoons of Italian seasoning. I did 2 tablespoons, not even knowing. Whoops. And it was still really good. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing for my marinade. Adding in four chicken breasts. The only thing I would have changed about this recipe is that I would have used thin sliced chicken breasts instead of the regular size. Or I could have cut them. I just was in a rush. I, this is a really late dinner. We're getting ready to leave for a vacation at this point, and I was just trying to throw dinner together. Um, so, yeah, let that marinade for 30 minutes. Then you're just going to add it to your greased baking dish, and you're going to let that cook. So saying you're gonna let that cook, you can make this chicken literally however you want. I would have loved to grill it or use my Ninja Foodi, but I was using the Foodi already for my Brussels sprouts because there's nothing like Brussels sprouts in the Ninja Foodi. They're just better that way. So while my chicken's marinating, I'm just cutting up our Brussels sprouts, gonna mix it in with some oil and salt and pepper and throw it in the Ninja Foodi on 390 degrees for about 15 minutes. Um, and then I'm baking the chicken in the oven 350 degrees for 30 minutes. It would have been much better if I grilled it or made it in the foodie, but it still came out really good. So while my chicken is cooking, I'm making the topping for the chicken right now, which I had extra of, and I wanted just eating it out of the bowl because this one is delicious just on its own. So I'm just using some grape tomatoes. The recipe calls for Roma tomatoes, but I didn't have any. Two avocados and four slices of mozzarella cheese. You're gonna wanna add some salt and pepper to this, and then you're gonna top your chicken with this when it's done. And optional, which doesn't seem like an option to me, is to add balsamic glaze on top. Balsamic glaze is where it's at. It's so delicious. I swear I could drink that stuff. Um, but yeah, you have to try this meal. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to share it with your friends if they could use some easy meal ideas as well.